right, well we've put it in our lathe, we've uh, put the cam lock on. We had to take the gap out of the lathe, that's the little piece of bed here underneath the uh, spindle here to swing it in there, but that's okay, that's just a matter of undoing a few bolts and that slides off. Um, then we get our surface gauge here and we can very carefully put it on there, on the sides there, get that running true there, both sides. We've got a little leeway if you need to tap it this way, you can tap it this way or that way, there's probably um, you know, a quarter of a millimetre space in the bolt hole there that, that'll move that one way or the other. Just use a block of wood and tap it whichever way you like, whichever way you can. Lock it up here, looking at where it's hitting on the web there, locking that side up. It's alright, that side there. Okay, all ready. Remove that. Now the tool that I'm using is is just a high speed steel tool bit that you can get online somewhere or you can buy it at garage sales. If you're looking at buying a lathe you might get some with it. It's pretty cheap, probably ten dollars that bit. Uh, it's very good quality P&N, Australian P&N, Sutton P&N, very good stuff. I've just ground it down and made a little boring bar out of it. I find that's the best type of boring bar for this uh, this work. I do all my little bushes and things with the same boring bar. It lasts for years. You can hold a good edge, uh, provided you don't uh, chip it or drop it or anything, it, it'll last you for years. I've got this all, the packing already set here. So that just goes in there, one bolt, it's all we need to hold it. Set it up there so that it's on size. Just tighten that up, that'll be wonderful. And we bring this tool up to the job. Just take it through to the other side. There it is there, through the other side. And just check that nothing is going to hit here before you start your lather. So that's as far as you're going to go through. So everything's clear there. Um, because the gap's missing here, I've wound the, the compound slide here forward to give me a bit of room. I don't really want this going into, the, into where the gap space is because it, it takes the rigidity of the, uh, of, the, of the bed away from the tool. So that should be good. There. Okay, I've set this at about 250, 230 RPM. That'll be a good speed. Let's try it. Not very fast. I can bring that up carefully. about there and away you go and take that out. It's just a matter of straight parallel turning. Pretty straightforward. Um, nothing, nothing complicated about it. I've kept the speed down. You know really that should be running at, at somewhere near 600 RPM but it's, it throws it out too much. The whole lay shakes. I've got no vibration in there. This is a very good lathe at Colchester. Uh, got roller bearings in the thing. You won't get any any uh, eccentric movement because of out of balance. If you're working at an old English lathe with bushes in it, white metal bearings, then you may have to put a piece of metal here to balance it, to balance it up. Um, I haven't worried about it. It's not too far out. But you can put something on here weld it on here to get it balanced to keep, keep it right. But for these lays I don't worry about it. I've turned that out, used my little my little um, inside calipers here to, to get the size. Micrometer here just to get the 
get the right size that I want. I was about ten thousandths of an inch out. Um, that's the finishing size. It's about nine thou underneath um, three quarter. So I can't use a reamer. If it was a three quarter, I could probably use a machine reamer to do it. But because it's not, I haven't worried. Doesn't matter. I can then just take it two thou at a time, and just with that, I just took it out. Um, sorry, when it was that down here, it had about ten thou to come out. So um, forty thou to a millimeter. I just took it point one of a millimeter, and then took a, um, a half, a, a point, point oh five a millimeter out, and just took it out gently, and eventually it became a very good fit. Now it's a bit tight in there, halfway where it's it's gone through the hole here for the for the clamp, and there's a bit of a burr there, so it just won't go through. But that's a pretty good fit. As you see, just quietly go at it, and you'll get, you'll achieve the end result. Okay. I'll just switch that off to make it a bit quieter. Now, yeah, so that's the end result. Just go at it quietly. Very simple machines, lathe. If you need to know a little bit about how to work your lathe and sharpen your tools, just go to YouTube. There's enough information on there to tell you all about it. These lathes you can pick up from the TAFE colleges nowadays. They don't use them in the TAFE colleges anymore. There's a whole stack of them coming up. We had we had something like 24 of them for sold here locally in Bundaberg over the last 10 years. Um, so you can pick up a very good lathe. And they've got all the equipment with them, which is, um, which is great too. If you buy a new lathe, then you've got to buy all these accessories and it gets very expensive. But this lathe here was probably worth $20,000 in 1982 when it was bought new. Uh, we got it for about $2,500 and it's hardly had any work. So there are some good buys. And if there's two or three of you restoring cars, then you buy it together. Or well, one boat buy this, another boat buy a milling machine which is another handy tool to have, or a shaper, or any of these machine tools. They're not worth anything these days, um, and, and that's why it's, it's more economical for you to, to, uh, to save probably $2,000 here in the purchase of those pistons, and putting in a piston, that Model T piston, which is a third of the mass of the original one. And of course it'll make your car run a lot better. All right. The next thing we have to do is we have to white metal the big end and we'll go through that with you in the next series of videos. Thank you very much.